Hello, friend. Welcome to Daily Treasure, a devotional podcast by Sharon Betters and Mark Inc. Ministries. And I'm your narrator, Jane Ann Wilson. This week, the guest writer is our friend, Karen Hodge. Today's devotional is Leadership That Shines. And today's treasure? Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12, 3. You are a star. You were made to shine like the brightest light in the heavens. Newsflash, the brilliance is not about you. God created stars on the fourth day. A star is an internal collision of hydrogen and helium atoms. This powerful impact produces a radiant light. God set forth the purpose of a star, and God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. Genesis 1.17 Stars scatter darkness. A life-giving leader is called to shine in a dark world and to radiate His glory to a watching world. There are a lot of misconceptions about leadership. Leadership is not synonymous with authority. It has little to do with title or role. It is not synonymous with decision-making. Leadership, biblically speaking, looks radically different. It is upside down. It holds within it the potential to be life-giving or life-taking. Another leadership misconception concerns a person's skill set, what this person can bring to the table. Life-giving leadership takes real spiritual wisdom. According to our treasure verse, the wise will lead others to righteousness or to Jesus. Solomon says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of the Lord is not a scary thing, but rather fearing to do or say something that keeps us from fulfilling our purpose, to glorify and enjoy God. Wisdom is not simply just knowledge acquired, but knowledge applied. So our purpose as star-like leaders is to shine light upon the earth in such a way that those who see it see Jesus in all his glory. A life-taking leader says, look at me. A life-giving leader prays, show me your glory. My son lives in Washington, D.C., home to some of our finest museums. My guess is you have visited there and perhaps have climbed to the second floor of the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History to view the Hope Diamond. Over 100 million visitors have also come to gaze at the 45.52 carat deep blue diamond. The room is dim, and the gem sits adorned in the middle of the room. Your inclination is to move as close as you can to catch a glimpse of its multifaceted splendor. You don't get too close, though, before the security guard urges you to take a step back. To adorn means to put something beautiful or attractive on display. It is the action Paul references in Titus 2.10 when he says, So that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. Adorning the gospel is spreading the fame of his name. It is living out the implications of the gospel, showing it to be both believable and beautiful. Nothing can change its intrinsic value, but our conduct has a direct influence on how people view the gospel. Our words and actions will either validate or negate the claims of the gospel. Life-giving leaders shine as they seek to adorn the gospel. When Jesus is lifted up, he said, I will draw all people to myself. John 12, 32 What are you radiating to a watching world? Self-glory or God's glory? Consider your perceptions of leadership. Have you ever tried to leverage your authority, role, or skills to control others? Do you fear to do or say something that keeps you from fulfilling your purpose to glorify and enjoy God? Is there a decision you need to make as a leader this week? Is your approach to simply acquire knowledge and information or are you seeking to apply what you know is true to the situation? Is the gospel adorned in your life in such a way that those around you lean in? to gaze at Jesus' work in your life? 
If these life-giving leadership devotionals are encouraging you, we invite you to look for Karen Hodge and Susan Hunt's excellent book, Life-Giving Leadership, at your favorite bookseller. Friends, thanks so much for joining us for the Daily Treasure podcast. And before we leave, I wanted to introduce you to our Help and Hope podcast for this week, a conversation with Shelley Tribbett. You know, have you ever wondered, is it possible to break free from drugs after a lifetime of addiction? Well, Shelley says, yes, it is possible. After using drugs for over 30 years, Shelley did break free from the drugs. But then she had to face the obstacle of the collateral damage that she had done to her family and her friends. In this poignant interview, Shelley describes the devastation drug use brought on her family, including the loss of the custody of her children. Her daughter, Bay, joins the conversation and describes how she reconciled with her mother and why she never gave in to the temptation of drug use, even though they were readily available. Friends, drug use in our culture is an epidemic. It isn't just teenagers who fall prey to this dangerous life choice. Shelley's story reminds us that drugs know no age limits. We are also able to see that reconciliation with estranged family members is possible, though the pathway to reconciliation will be painful and often long. I hope that you'll check out this Help and Hope story. Go to helpandhopenow.org and look for our conversation with Shelley Tribbett, and we call it When Drugs Steal Your Life. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to being with you tomorrow.